Hello everyone. Today I take class 7 poem. It comes in English literature. This lesson comes after the chapter 2, page number 29 in your Mulberry Test Book. The title of the poem is In the Bazaars of Hyderabad. In the nutshell, through this poem, Sarojini Naidu tried to show us the diverse category of activities that take place in the bazaar of Hyderabad. Students, have you ever seen the Hyderabad bazaars? Or have you seen any bazaars in your locality? Then, let's think of the sounds, sights and smells that greet us as we walk through a bazaar. Students, here is a small introduction which is given in your test book also. The poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad is a brilliant piece of writing by the Indian woman poet Sarojini Naidu. 1879-1949 This was the time duration of her life. To understand the context for writing this poem, you first need to know that Sarojini Naidu was a major political figure in the Indian freedom movement in the first half of the 20th century. She was the president of the Indian National Congress and the first woman governor in India. The poem typifies the social and the cultural life of Hyderabad. It is not only meant for financial dealing, for buying or selling, but it is also a meeting place for people from different backgrounds having multifarious interests. Through this poem, in the bazaars of Hyderabad, Sarojini wanted to convey the message that India is rich in tradition and they don't need the foreign products. So, she goes on to give a picture of a bazaar where traditional Indian products are ruling. The poem is in the form of questions and answers. The poet asks the questions and the merchants answer them. Through this technique, she makes the picture of the bhasa visible to us. The poem contains five stanzas of six lines each. It follows a unique rhyme scheme where the second, fourth and sixth lines in each stanza are rhyming. The last stanza is a slight exception though. So the general scheme is A, B, C, B, C, B. In this poem, Sarojini Naidu describes the colors and sounds of various stalls in bazaars of Hyderabad, the city where she was born and spent her childhood. Let's listen to the beautiful poem and understand it. It's actually beautiful because it makes us feel that we are standing in the middle of bazaar. Students, in the Bhasas of Hyderabad is a very interesting poem. Here, each stanza's related pictures are displayed. Look at the pictures and understand properly. Let's begin. What do you sell, O ye merchants? Richly your wares are displayed. Turbans of crimson and silver, tunics of purple brocade, mirror with the panels of amber, daggers with the handles of jade. Here, 
The poem begins with the poet's question to the merchants about what they are selling. She sees that the goods are displayed nicely to attract the buyers. The merchants reply that they are selling crimson and silver colored turbans, purple brocade tunics, mirrors with amber frame and daggers with the handles made of jade. Let's see the difficult words meaning. Number 1 A that means an old fashioned word for you. Number 2 brocade that means a thick heavy fabric with a raised pattern woven especially from gold or silver silk thread. Number 3 jade that means a hard stone that is usually green and is used in making ornaments and jewelry. Now let's see the second stanza. What do you weigh, O ye wonders, saffron and lentil and rice? What do you grind, O ye maidens, sandalwood, henna and spice? What do you call, O ye pearlers, chessmen and ivory dice? Here, the poet then visits the wonders, the maidens and the pearlers. She asks the vendors what they are weighing for sale. The vendors reply that they are weighing saffron, lentil and rice. The poet then asks the maiden girls what they are grinding. The reply comes that they are grinding sandalwood, henna and spices. And now the pearlers are asked what they are calling as their trade cry. They say that they are selling chessmen and ties made from ivory for the game of chess. Let's see third stanza. What do you make, O ye godsmen, wristlet and anklet and ring? Bells for the feet of blue pigeons, frails as a dragonfly swing, girdles of gold for the dancers, scabbards of gold for the king. Here, the poet now goes up to the godsmen and ask them what they are making. They are making wristlet, anklet and ring to adorn and bells to be tied to the feet of blue pigeons. And the bells are as thin and lightweight as the wings of a dragonfly. They are also making golden girdles for the dancers and golden sheets for keeping the king's swords. Here is two difficult words are here. Girdles and scabbards. Girdles means belt or thick strings fastened around the waist to keep clothes in positions. Scabbards means Covers for swords made of leather or metal. Fourth stanza. What do you cry, O ye fruit men? Citron, pomegranate and plum. What do you play, O musicians? Sita, sarangi and drum. What do you chant, O magicians? Spells for the eons to come. Here, the poet asks the fruit seller, What fruits are they selling? They answer that there are citron, pomegranate and plum. Now, as the poet asks the musicians, 
what instruments are they playing they reply that they are playing on sita sarangi and trump after that poet goes to the magicians and asks them what they are chanting the reply comes he is chanting the spells to bring in eons that means a divine power who would help him perform his magical tricks here two words meanings are there citron that means citrus fruit sita that is the spells of s i t a r a sitar a musical instrument used mainly for indian classical music fifth stanza what do you weave o ye flower girls with the tassels of azure and red crowns for the brow of a bridegroom chaplets to garland his bed sheets of white blossoms new garnet to perfume the sleep of the dead this is the last stanza of the poem the poet asks the flower girls what they are weaving with the azure and red tassels the flower girls are making garlands for the bridegroom and to adorn their bed for the wedding night they are also making sheets of newly brought white flowers for use on the dead man's grave for fragrance here is the words meaning azure that means bright blue in color chaplets strings of flowers students can you say what is the theme of this poem the theme of the poem is in the bazaars of hyderabad is associated with one such subject the charm and enthusiasm of a traditional indian bazaar in the city of hyderabad is presented in this poem naidu had enthusiastically described the bazaar with the merchants and vendors selling diverse range of wares the poet stops over at the galleries arranged by the merchants traders hawkers godsmith fruit sellers peddlers magicians musicians and flower girls the poet describes the experience of conversation between the seller and the buyer here the poet questions the sellers about what they are selling and who in turn answer politely explaining their products emotional moods are stirred by the poet when naidu makes the readers feel that the bazaar life also witness both sorrows and joys wedding and festival occasions brings joy in the bazaar's life when people buy jewelry garlands fruits and children crowding near the magicians the sorrow and the sadness is witnessed when common public kitchens are arranged when the nobles or soldiers die and when flower girls are seen weaving masses of white flowers to be used for the dead people's grave another theme in the poem is the sodeshi moment though not specifically mentioned in the poem the poem was written during the indian independence movement by this poem naidu proves that 
ഇന്ത്യ ഈസ് റിച്ച് ഇൻ ട്രഡീഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദർ ഈസ് നോ റിക്വയർമെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഫോറിൻ പ്രൊഡക്ട്സ് ത്രൂത്ത് ദ പോയം നൈഡു എൻകറേജസ് ദ ഇന്ത്യൻസ് ടു ബൈ ഗുഡ്സ് ഫ്രം ദർ ട്രഡീഷണൽ ബസാസ് ആൻഡ് ഷി അർജസ് ദ കൺട്രി മെൻ ടു ടേക്ക് പാർട്ട് ഇൻ ദ സ്വദേശി മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ബോയ്ക്കോട്ട് ഓൾ ഫോറിൻ ഗുഡ്സ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ഐ ഹോപ്പ് യു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദ പോയം ദ ബസാസ് ഓഫ് ഹൈദരാബാദ് In the poem Sarojini Naidu depicts a picture of the bazaars of Hyderabad through vivid imagery. Now let's understand what is imagery. Imagery is the use of language to evoke pictures in the minds of the readers or listeners. Imagery appeals to the senses. now you can see few words here that is visual auditory olfactory tactile gustatory what is visual visual means that can be seen or visible auditory means that relating to hearing olfactory that concerning the sense of smell tactile that sense of touch gustatory that sense of taste exercise 1 here is a table with some examples of the different kinds of imagery that are found in the poem identify other examples of each kind of imagery and write them in the table the first one is visual examples turbans of crimson and silver now can you say one example that is tunics of purple brocade another one is daggers with a handle of jade now let's see next column all factory and gustatory here the example is freshly ground saffron another one is sandalwood paste and powder the smell of henna and spices the fragrance of fresh flowers now the third columns comes in auditory examples playing of a drum and another one is chanting of spells by magicians cry of fruits men playing of sarangi exercise 2 state the type of imagery used in each of the following sentences number 1 as i woke up i inhaled the fresh fragrance of jasmine growing in my garden that comes in olfactory b from my hotel room I could hear the waves crashing against the rocks. What is the answer? That is auditory. Number 3. I was so hungry that I ate up the sweet juicy peaches I was saving for dinner. What is the answer? That gustatory. number 4 i bought the fabric for its soft velvety tester answer is tactile number 5 the sun looked like a ball of fire in the sky 
answer is visual students write down the poem and meanings also in your copy and try to learn the poem and meanings you will get the question answer later thank you have a nice day